Alright, what is going on lovely ladies and gentlemen? This is going to be the first video of a short little series of videos. This is going to show off the various decks that I have built. Not entirely by myself. There has been some help from the internet doing some research because obviously I am not at all, uh, you know, knowledgeable about the many, many goddamn cards that are in this entire series. So I needed some help, but with that help I feel like I have constructed some pretty effective decks. And I know how much people like to see uh, decks that other people have built in regard to certain uh, archetypes and whatnot. So, the very first one we're going to be showing off is the Vampire deck. The whole process of what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to do two fights against the single player challenge mode. Just so I can show off the cards in kind of like a staggered format. So you can just see them kind of individually. Uh, what they do, what they are capable of, and what I use them for. And then after that, oops, and then after that, um, I'll actually show off the entire deck so it's not just like, you know, I'm not just starting off by this massive information dump. Uh, instead, you get to potentially see the cards at a fairly, you know, at a rate at which you could you can retain the knowledge of, you know, what I'm trying to do with the cards and whatnot beforehand. That wasn't, that's not a very good draw. Uh, I mean, the Vampire Sorcerer is okay. So, the Vampire Sorcerer, well, we'll start with this one because we're actually going to use this one. This just lets me send one monster from my deck to the graveyard. I almost always send Mizuki. However, I can potentially use that uh, in other ways. Like, if I have Mizuki's already there, I can use that card to send a stronger zombie monster to the graveyard. And then use Mizuki's effect to then directly summon that card. Um, so anyway, Vampire Sorcerer, what he's capable of is that when he is destroyed by either battle or an opponent's card effect, so like Rageki or something like that, uh, I get to then take any Vampire card in my deck, add it to my hand, and then when he's in the graveyard, I get to, I can activate him, banish him, and then I can tribute summon any one norm, uh, Vampire monster without actually tributing. So that's fantastic for getting out some of the stronger zombie monsters. This is actually amusingly that I got that card. That is, this is always my first target when I have Vampire Sorcerer. I always want to have that in my pocket, and I always keep one Vampire Sorcerer there so that I can summon this card. But Mizuki's effect, why I sent him to the graveyard, is that when he is in the graveyard, similarly to the Vampire Sorcerer, I can banish him from the graveyard to special summon any one zombie type monster that is also in my graveyard. So I may as well flip summon this dude. It is entirely possible that I may end up getting bopped by like a mere force or something right now, but I'm not too worried about prop like you know playing a properly tactical game. Uh, even though you know that is kind of important, just so you don't you know develop kind of you know oh this dude has three cards in his back row, let me just go all in. You know like that's generally not a very good idea. But we got potentially the most important card in my entire deck right here. So the Unizombie, as you can see right there from the green little part. He's a tuner, which means he is a vital component of synchronization and the only tuner in my deck. There's only two zombie tuners that I'm aware of, either him or Plague Spreader Zombie. The problem with Plague Spreader Zombie is that he is a specific component. Like some uh, synchronization cards re require a very specific tuner and there are three that I'm aware of that require Plague Spreader Zombie. However, those three are not actually in the main game. I believe, uh, from what I've heard, they are DLC locked, and I am inclined to believe that, because I have almost 6,300 cards at this point in time, and no zombie synchronization monsters whatsoever. Uh, but anyway, so the reason why Unizombie is so vital is that when it comes to synchronization, or potentially XYZ, he can also come in very effectively for XYZ, um, but, you know, obviously since he's a tuner, his main focus is for synchronization. He can change either his level or any le uh, level of a face-up monster on the field, even my opponent's monster. So, like, I could potentially use that for some shenanigans. Like, if I see somebody set up a setting up a specific synchronization or something like that, I can potentially just add a level and kind of ruin that setup because now they don't have the exact levels required for that synchronization. I don't have enough knowledge to take advantage of that. But that is something that's kind of in my mind as a potential tactic to use. Now, as you can see, I can activate his effect. There are two effects that he has. This one allows me to discard uh, a card from my hand. And then I can increase a target's level by one. I don't really use that one terribly often. Because this one is far more effective. It's the same exact thing, except I discard a card from... I discard a zombie-type monster from my deck. 
to the graveyard, and then again, I increase the, whatever monster I've selected, their level gets increased by one. Uh, the downside to this also, in case you don't see all of that, only zombie, one, when I use this effect, only zombie monsters can attack for the rest of the turn. So, like right now, technically, I could synchronize something, but I don't wanna, because as I just said, there are no zombie synchronization monsters, so I would be wasting 2,800 damage right now because, you know, anything that I would synchronize, I would not be able to do anything with. But now we can go to the main phase two, and now I can synchronize, and I have two level eight synchronization monsters right here. Bielza, very strong card, not as strong as I initially thought, because there are a fair amount of counters. One of the counters is actually right here, Castell. Uh, but the his big effect, and I am just going to go ahead and summon him right now, fighting the Dragon Master with a Dragon, seems appropriate to me. So his entire effect is that he cannot be destroyed. This card cannot be destroyed. So let's say Kaiba manages to uh, summon in his 4,500 strength blue eyes ultimate dragon. I don't think he actually has it in this deck. But let's just say for a second he does. This dude got a shit draw. But le again, let's just say for a moment that that's what he got. So I'm actually going to use Mizuki here to bring back uh, any. I can bring back anything to finish this fight off. But yeah, so that card cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So anything like Mirror Force, Rageki, Dark Hole, any of that stuff, any monsters that had a higher attack power than him. But let's just say he summoned in a Blue Eyes White Dragon, just a regular one. As you can see, they both have 3,000 attack. I would be able to go head-to-head -head with that card. Blue Eyes White Dragon would be destroyed. This card would stay on the field. So it cannot be removed. Uh, it cannot be destroyed. However, again... It's the nuance of the wording that you really have to pay attention to when it comes to using cards in this game, and that is because there are a lot of card effects, which I just mentioned Castell. Uh, with Castell, one of his effects is that you can... Let me see, who else should we fight? I don't want to fight... Um, you know what? Let's fight Yami. Why not? Um, I don't... What was, what was I what was I talking about right here? Alright, so Castell's effect is that you can detach two XYZ materials from that card, and then you can target any I think it's any card on the field. I don't know if it has to be face up. I believe it does have to be face up, but that's just running from memory right now. And you return that card to the bottom of the deck. So because there's no wording in there, nothing that says destruction, that works, and that removes Beelza. Uh, very effectively it works very well I unfortunately did not get a terribly good draw here I do not enjoy I would prefer to save my vampire lady uh, because so let's get into vampire vamp for a bit real quick while we have the chance vampire vamps effect is that you can see she's a level 7 monster right like a level 7 monster with 2000 2000 not very effective it would be wonderful if this game system would allow me to goddamn sit here there goes my call of the haunted it would be wonderful if the cursor would stay on this fucking card and not continue to just mm, i hate this system so much anyway um so vampire vamps effect is that if there is a card on the field that has a higher attack power than her i then get to um steal that card from the opponent it has to be a monster card obviously i get to steal that card from the opponent equip it to her and then she gains that monster's base attack so like for instance let's just say he equipped an axe of despair to uh breaker breaker would have 2600 damage i could then summon her and steal breaker but the axe of uh the axe of despair would be removed so she would only get an additional 1600 attack However, that is kind of beneficial in that... God damn, I really don't have anything. I could... I guess I could just run an Endless Decay right now. Why not? I don't really got anything else going for me. I got a bad draw. But yeah, so the reason why I prefer to keep Vampire Lady in my hand is because... If this card is destroyed while there's a card equipped to her... That equip card does get destroyed, but I get to resummon her immediately. And so she's back on the field with 2000 2000 and then I can, if I play another vampire card, if I normal summon another vampire card, I can activate that effect again. So I can potentially steal another monster. So that is why I enjoy always trying to have a vampire lady in my hand solely uh, to utilize that effect. I would assume I probably want to get rid of this dude the most. So Endless Decay, what does he do? You see, he had a question mark in the beginning. Now he has 3850. When you play him, uh, he gets his attack power becomes half of the current life points of your opponent. Um, it can be a pretty decent. Co uh oh, we about to get synchroed. It can be a pretty damn decent um, comeback card because its other effect is that if I have less than 2,000 life points at the time, 
I can summon him without tributing. Ooh, what are we doing with here? These, these, these. That's mean. That's rude. It's unnecessary. At least it only has 1,400 attack now, though. So what is it, 1,000 attack per? Yep. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and utilize... Foolish Burial again, probably going to... I could, uh... I was gonna say, I could send a Vampire Sorcerer there. And then I would be able to summon in Vampire Vamp. But the problem with that idea is that Vampire Vamp would not be able to steal anything. So it would kind of be a waste. So I may as well just do this and bring back Endless Decay. Because he will have the highest attack power. Like, I could kill this card, very obviously, with, uh... Vampire Lady, but Vampire Lady is probably going to get bopped by the rest of the cards in this dude's deck. Okay, so what's the what, what does this do? Once per turn, if you would activate a card effect by removing a spell counter, you can remove that. Oh, okay, cool. Looks like, uh, though, it says because it does specify spell effect, that would mean like you couldn't do it for Breaker, since Breaker is a monster effect. You bastard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are we going to get bought by this time? Nothing. <laughs> We're going to get bopped by nothing. All right. God damn it. So this is actually one of my new cards. I want to see if this works, actually. So it has... It does. So I'm not sure if this is bugged. I feel like it is because it doesn't seem right. Um, basically, the very first time I ended up having an Endless Decay in combination with this card. So what this card does, if you have only one original type of monsters in your graveyard, all monsters you control with the same type gain 800 attack. One of the problems I am having with this deck is it kind of lacks just an overall level of firepower that a lot of other decks can bring to the table. So like, I have a bunch of auxiliary effects, you know, Vampire Vamp. If somebody brings a particularly strong monster, I can steal that monster with Vampire Vamp. But, if I don't have Vampire Vamp available, then I'm kind of just screwed at that point. Like, that's not a good place to be. So I added Solidarity to it because, except for Synchronization Monsters and XYZ Monsters, all of the cards in this deck are zombie type. So I get a pretty significant benefit from Solidarity. Kind of gets screwed, again, if I do end up synchronizing something and that Synchronization Monster gets killed. But that is something that I'll deal with when I come to it. But so the very first time I played this, I had Solidarity already out. And so I played Endless Decay, and what actually happened was that it put, because Solidarity was there, it put Endless Decay's attack to 800, and then his effect activated. And so he wasn't getting, his attack just changed to half of the opponent's life points, and he didn't actually get the additional 800 attack, which I feel, again, that doesn't really make logical sense in my mind, but it's entirely possible that that is intentional. I don't know the strict rules of Yu-Gi-Oh, and by any way, shape or form oh no oh that's actually not that bad uh i believe it's only by battle right nope just if a spellcaster type monster would be destroyed so i can go ahead and utilize raigeki here we will remove that spell counter oh it actually doesn't it's completely irrelevant actually it didn't even matter because i forgot they would still even though the card is not destroyed they would still take the life point damage from that so they would have died anyway so, let's go ahead and go over here, check out the deck, Shadow of the Vampire. So, we saw uh, that card at the very end. That's cards mostly in conjunction with the effects of Mizuki and Vampire Sorcerer, because they have to be banished. Um, but it also allows me to potentially bring something back with the Lure of Darkness. So, I'm kind of on the fence about keeping this card, because I'm perfectly okay. That's something I kind of had to get through my head, that like discarding a card to the graveyard is actually not a bad idea with this deck. Um, but banishing it is definitely something that that's a little more that's more difficult to uh, come back from So I'm not sure that that's worth it to get an additional two cards But however, it could be something to keep in my back pocket like okay. I really need Something right now. Let me play this, but I'm, I'm not I'm on the fence about it Book of life allows me to target one zombie type monster in my graveyard and I bring that card back I also get to target one monster in the opponent's graveyard and banish that card. The problem is that it requires there to be a monster in the opponent's graveyard. So, like, if I'm just getting absolutely curb stomped and there's something that I could bring back from my graveyard to win the fight for me, but they don't have any monsters in their graveyard, I cannot play that card. So that's the downside to it, uh, kind of, but, I mean, you know, it's a downside and an upside that you get to banish a monster from an opponent's graveyard. This card allows me to bring back to, uh, up to three banished monsters back from the banished pit, whatever, 
to the graveyard. I can also target opponent's monsters with that, and I'm sure there are, I know there are card effects that play off of banished monsters, so that could also kind of benefit me to remove stuff from an opponent's uh, banished set as well. But mostly it's for me, because again, that would allow me to potentially have up to three additional Mizukis or Vampire Sorcerer's effects, which is awesome. Dark Hole, you know what that is, you saw that, we know what that is, we know what these are, we know what that is, we explained this, we know what that is, we know what that is, we know what all these are. These are like kind of mainstay cards in terms of, you know, traps and spells that you're going to have. We saw Endless Decay, we saw Mizuki. We actually did not see a single Pyramid Turtle throughout the entirety of that, did we? Or no, we did see one at the very beginning, I think. Maybe? We did, because then I used that to summon the Vampire Sorcerer. But anyway, just to go over it again, Pyramid Turtle is one of those like really effective monsters because it bypasses tributing. Again, I don't need to tribute something in order to potentially get you know the Vampire Duke or the Vampire Lord or the uh, Vampire Vamp in case you know maybe I have some effect to do with that. Otherwise, it just allows me to bring out useful monsters that I may want to have on the field at that point in time. Very, very important because you know it's one of those kind of things that it, it's just an additional placeholder which basically kind of gives you you know you may as well have another one of these cards or another one of these cards you know it's not really there to be a pyramid turtle it's there to bring out something more important than it this is just here as my defensive monster it also has the beneficial effect of protecting the unizombie if i have a unizombie on the field and i want it to last for a little bit longer because as you can see face up level three or lower zombie type monsters on the field cannot be destroyed by battle and are unaffected by spell or trap effects so, I think that might be a double-edged sword as well. Like, I don't have any... I guess I do. It wouldn't be affected by this, I think. I don't know, because it doesn't say opponents' spells or traps. It just says spells or traps. But, again, you know, they're not really there to be an offensive powerhouse. They're there to set up synchronization or um, XYZ. So, having them protected for a little bit is definitely something that would be very beneficial in the long run, I hope, potentially. I haven't had it come up yet, but who knows. Uh, this is one of the cards I think I may want to slice that down to one instead of two because I kind of just maneuver one around all the time and having a second one is just, you know, a time where I could end up drawing a level five card when I don't want a level five card. But anyway, he has two special effects. When normal summoned, I can target one vampire monster that's in my graveyard and summon that in defense mode, which isn't all that useful because, uh, pretty much every vampire card has terrible defense. <laughs> It may end up coming in useful for Vampire Vamp, because Vampire Vamp does have 2,000 defense, but other than her, like, everything is just easily smashed through in terms of a Vampire's defense. Um, the effect that is more useful when you special summon it, I get to declare one type of card, so either monster, spell, or trap, and the opponent has to discard one of those types of cards from their deck to the graveyard, which is awesome, you know, potentially removing a bunch of traps that, you know, I don't want to be activated on me, that kind of stuff. Um, and you can activate it, you can only activate it once per turn, but it becomes very fluid. I can potentially kind of churn through somebody's traps or spells if I know they have important ones that they want to get. Because, uh, I can, it's pretty easy to special summon this dude repeatedly and cause that effect to happen, you know, over a sequence of turns. Vampire Genesis and Vampire Lord are pretty much tied together. Um, to, in order to summon Vampire Genesis, you have to banish a vampire lord that's on the field which is why i'm kind of on the fence like this is the single most powerful card that is a vampire card without vampire vamps additional effect and like i said that was one of the things that i feel like vampires are really lacking in is just overall firepower so i felt you know okay let me get something that actually has some muscle behind it but just the simple fact that i have to go through the steps to get a vampire lord out onto the field first first before i can get this guy in is again kind of putting me on the fence of whether or not I'm entirely I'm not entirely sure if it's worth it just because Vampire Lord is not a particularly great card by itself since you can see it only has 2,000 attack um, and his beneficial effect is that when I do uh, battle damage I get to do the same effect as special summoning Vampire Duke but it's very rare that this card's gonna cause battle damage because again he only really has 2,000 attack and because of how involved the process is to potentially get this dude out onto the field my opponent will probably have gotten you know their own momentum going by then which is going to kind of prevent me from being able to do battle damage to the opponent but we'll see you know i don't have a ton of practice with this deck so i'll you know we'll see in the long run whether or not that's useful vampire lady i already explained vampire sorcerer we've seen the only one out of the rest of it that we have not seen is zombie master and this is one of the cards that, to again kind of the throwback of uh, at the very beginning, I was like, why would I ever want to discard a card? That sounds like a terrible idea. I would never want to do that, so I removed most of the zombie masters. And now, you know, that I've gotten more experience, now I can see, like, there are tons of times 
when I would want to get a specific card into my graveyard, whether it's something that I would want to send there so I can Mizuki it out without having to normal summon it, or whether it's a Mizuki itself, like I feel like I'm in need of a Mizuki, or I have a Vampire Sorcerer that I want to kill off so I can use his effect. There's so many different things that I could take advantage of by sending a specific card to the graveyard that now I'm like, oh, okay, this card is actually a hell of a lot better than I initially thought it was, and maybe I want to uh, revisit having more of these in my deck, which is, again, if I end up getting rid of one of these, like, I would probably replace it with a Zombie Master, that kind of thing. In terms of XYZ and Synchro, I don't really, I don't really know enough about the game to have effectively placed stuff in here. Um, like all of these, uh, Adreus, Crimson Knight, Vampire, Bram, and Levalval Chain, those were all already in here. This is just kind of in here as like, hey, if they have something that's boosted hella high, I can use that to get rid of it, I guess. But that's also something that Castell can do as well. So like, it's kind of, I'm not sure. But this one does have higher attack power than Castell, so it does have that going for it. But in terms of synchronization, I just tried to grab, you can see I have a level 8, I have a level 9, and I have a level 10. That's because of how fluid Unizombie allows me to be in terms of what I can synchronize. Um, and so I just tried to grab, you know, monsters that seem like they had good effects in terms of what they're capable of when I am able to summon them. This one, I'm not sure of. You know, it was one of those things, again, where, like, I initially thought Beelzebub was a hell of a lot stronger than he actually was. This one, you know, the cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effects. So, like, I don't know. Again, nuance of wording is so important to this entire series. Do cards, like for instance, Lightning Vortex, Raigeki, Dark Hole, as far as I'm aware, because those affect everything, not just one specific card, they do not target. Thus, I was sitting there thinking like, oh, this card can't be destroyed by traps or spells except on my main phase two, which you can't really play cards during the main phase two. So that's really fucking strong. But again, now it's that nuance of wording where I'm not really sure that's going to work out in practice like it's, you know, like it exists in my head. So we'll see how that works out in the end, but that's just kind of my uh again, like there's so many synchronization dudes, I have not had the time to look through them yet. Um and it really just kind of disappoints me overall that they're the zombie synchronization monsters are DLC locked. That makes me super sad. <laughs> to be perfectly honest but anyway there is the vampire deck a little bit of practice with it a little bit of showing off what it's capable of hope you enjoyed i will have videos for harpies and six samurai coming up after this at some point in time